Hello everyone and welcome back to Average Nerd Talks. Now we're going to be doing a multi-part beginner series on something like a guide to Linux and how Linux works. And today's going to be the first video in that series. As I've mentioned in some of my previous videos, um, when it comes to learning Linux, there is a price that you have to pay. There is a price to the freedom that it gets you. The price is simply your time and a little bit of effort in learning how your new operating system works. Now, if you're a long-standing Windows user, some of these habits and some of these things may be a little bit more daunting or a little difficult for you to pick up, but stick with it and you will actually start realizing that it's not a hard or complicated system to understand, it's just different. With these videos um, going forth, all I'm trying to do is make your life a little bit easier uh, when it comes to picking up these new skills, when it comes to picking up a Linux-based operating system, um, especially if you want to leave Microsoft Windows behind or you want to leave um, Mac OS behind, albeit you probably wouldn't want to leave Mac OS behind because as I understand it, Mac users are a little more stubborn when it comes to change, which is fine. As I've always said, and as I'm going to keep saying even henceforth, you should use whatever operating system or whatever computer you feel the most comfortable using. It's your productivity that's important. It's your computer and most importantly, it's your choice, right? And that's what I think Linux offers you is more choice. But again, what you use on your computer is your choice and nobody should be able to, nobody should be able to take that away from you. If you choose to use Windows on your computer, that's your choice, that's your power, and nobody should be able to take that away from you, not Microsoft, not Apple, and definitely not me. So without much further ado, let's get started. So today we're gonna be talking about drives, partitions, and the Linux file system in general. Now this is actually a question which I get a lot when I recommend uh, Linux to a lot of people, people who actually uh, start using Linux on their system, is where is my C drive? Right? Where is my D drive? Where are all my drive letters? And I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's a pretty valid concern if this is your first time with Linux and you you don't really have a My Computer with Linux, right? Which is something you're used to seeing with Windows where you open your My Computer or My PC, I don't know what it's called these days, uh, thing, and then uh, you see your C drive, you see your D drive if you have one, or an E drive if you have one. Um, but if it's your first time using Linux, you realize that, well, there are no drive letters. So there's no C drive, there's no D drive. You simply have a home folder, which can be a bit confusing as to what exactly is your home folder and what what is what are you supposed to do with it, right? <laughs> Starting with the Windows file system and the way you're used to seeing it in Windows is disks or partitions of disks are assigned a drive letter. So if you've got a laptop, it's very likely that the only drive letter you'll see is a C colon. Now this is considered as the main disk or the main partition of your Windows computer, right? So if you have more than one disk on your computer, it's likely you're gonna have a C drive and a D drive. If you have more, so your D drive is here, your second disk. If you have more than two disks, then it could be um, an additional drive letter like E or maybe even F. If you connect a flash drive to your computer, then you know it gets another drive letter and that appears in your um, My Computer, right? Now, in some cases, you may even have a disk uh, partitioned into multiple segments, wherein a C drive is gonna, again, be your main partition. And then you may have additional partitions like a D or an E. Now note in this situation, it's the same disk that has been split up into multiple different sections, which we call partitions. And each partition in this case is being assigned a drive letter, right? Now in the Linux file system, there is no such thing as a drive letter. Now, whenever you have uh, a Linux installation or a Linux-based operating system installed on a drive, um, 
The main partition, which is equivalent to the C drive in Windows, is called the root partition or just root, right? Which is often represented by a forward slash. Now, in terms of Linux, this can be thought of as sort of a super folder or a folder containing all other folders and the entire operating system as a whole. So the home folder that you see is actually part of this root folder. The home folder is typically where um, any user's personal files and their application configuration files would go. For every user, the home directory for that specific user resides in slash home slash username, whatever the username may be. So in my case, it would be something like slash home slash Piyush, which is where all my personal files on my computer would go. If you create a second account on the computer, say uh, John, it's gonna be slash home slash John, right? Now note that the first slash here before home slash home, the first slash is our root, root directory, right? So this is our super folder. So now where do disks and partitions come in, right? So the interesting thing about Linux is all your disks and all your partitions are actually mounted as a folder. Now, when I say mounted, it means that the folder in this situation is representing a disk or is representing a partition. So when you mount a disk, it's being made accessible to you via your operating system. Uh, and it's being shown to you as a folder. So in Windows, you can also call it mounting, but in Windows, you're not mounting your disk as a folder, you're mounting it as a drive letter, right? So don't try to get too caught up in the whole terminology of it, but it's always good to know. When you mount something, it only means that the disk is now accessible to you. It doesn't matter whether it's through a drive letter or it's through a folder, right? So in the same way, when you say root, or um, the main super folder that resides on your Linux system, that is also being mounted on a disk, right? So whatever partition you install Linux to or whatever hard drive or SSD that you've installed Linux to, that's where your root folder is actually being mounted, right? So now that starts to make a little more sense, doesn't it? So other disks, which means uh, flash drives, or it could even be partitions or another disk or another SSD, are also going to be mounted as folders within root. So let's say you want to install Linux or you want to install your operating system on OneDrive. Well, not Microsoft OneDrive, on a drive, SSD or hard drive. And you want to put all your personal files and all user personal files onto a, a different drive or a different disk. Right. In this situation, you would mount one disk as root, which is your main disk. It would be mounted as root and your second disk, which is where all your files go, will be mounted as home. OK, so now this is not very difficult to do when you're installing your Linux based operating system, but it's something you need to know in order to figure out, OK, there are no drive letters and there are mount points. Now, mount, mount point is simply the folder that you want to mount that partition to, right? So let's say you have two disks. Again, the same example that we did before. If I want to install my operating system to disk one, then the mount point that I will set up for disk one will be slash because that's my super folder. That's where my operating system will go. If I want to put all my uh, personal files or all user personal files onto a different drive, then I will mount that drive as slash home, right? So the mount point for that drive is going to be slash home. And there you have it. So that's it. So that all your operating system files will go into this drive and all your home and everything under home will be, will be going into this drive because the home folder is now representing your second disk and your slash, that is your root, is representing your first disk. Does that make sense? Now you can even go a few steps further. So uh, most Linux based operating systems will give you a um, app or a GUI to actually set this up to set up your mount points. So let's say in the future you buy yourself a new disk and you want to set it up as say a storage device or you want to use it as a place to put all your games. 
It's also possible to set up a mount point from any of these GUI applications. So now your new disk can be set up to be mounted wherever you want on as, as whatever folder you want. So you don't really have any limitations when it comes to drive letters, right? All your uh, folders can be remapped in some way or any folder on your computer can be used as a mount point for any kind of disk. So that's one way in which it doesn't really matter what your disks are doing or where your disks are, what letter does your disk uh, have. It, it doesn't really matter in a Linux system. Everything is a folder, right? So typically if you uh, insert a flash drive or an external hard drive on your system, it would either be mounted in slash MNT slash whatever the name your operating system decides to give your flash drive would be, or it would be mounted in slash media in some uh, systems. It varies depending upon what operating system you're using. This is not really all that hard to figure out. Um, in most Linux based operating systems, it will just show up as a drive on either your desktop or in your file manager. However, it's always good to know where this drive is being mounted, you know, what folder is the what folder is being regarded as the mount point for this specific drive, just so you know, if you really want to mess around with uh, the mount points for a very specific drive, you can actually do that. Now there are more advanced ways of setting up mount points, including mounting network storage devices as a folder on your computer. That's absolutely possible to do on Linux. But I won't be covering that in this video because that is a little more complicated to do. Um, if you go online, you might find some resources on how to use the fstab file for mounting devices. Just be aware that editing your fstab file in any way could potentially break your system. So when you're doing that, be very, very careful. Uh, this guide is just to, you know, educate you on how the file system on Linux works, how disks and partitions on Linux work. But if you break your system, then it could be pretty difficult to recover from if you don't know how to uh, you know, fix it again or revert all the changes that you've already done to your system. So in the next few uh, videos, I'll be covering different aspects of Linux, including the terminal, which may be very useful to you if in case you mess around with your system and break something, or, you know, just as a uh, additional tool for you to learn and um, navigate your system or mess around with things. Thank you everyone for watching. If you liked this video, hit like. If you didn't like it, hit dislike and let me know why down in the comments below. If you think I've missed something and something that the community should know, please leave a comment down below and let everyone know, share your knowledge. Um, if you haven't already, get subscribed and hit that little bell notification icon so you can get notified whenever I put out a next video. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next one.